Well, we're in a series uh, basically about um, you ask for it. And, and today we're going to deal with stress. Now, no one deals with stress, right? No. The first week I dealt with, we dealt with uh, anxiety, and I shared my story, uh, what, what I went through personally. Last week, Pastor Randy did an amazing job sharing about how to manage your time, right? And today we're going to be talking about stress, basically this, better from stress. Don't you love that? We should make a T-shirt that says better from stress. Right? I mean, no one likes stress, but stress is a part of life, no matter how hard you try. And I want to encourage you to let you know that no matter what you're going through, God understands what you're going through, and you're not alone. And, and sometimes the greatest stress you and I face really is ourselves. But you're thinking, by now I should be over this, and you're still struggling, perhaps even this past week, perhaps even on the way to church this morning, perhaps even last night, something took place, you got angry. And by the way, if you find that trouble often happens before church, am I the only one? Okay, I guess I'm alone in this. But often before that you want to read your word or do something that's going to en enhance you or help you spiritually with God, there seems to be a kickback, right? I have good news for you. So you may feel like, you know what? I feel like God's after me. I feel like God's after me. I have good news for you. He is after you. He's after you because he loves you and he really wants you to stop persecuting yourself and release yourself to him and let him heal you. Amen. That's what he really wants. For those, for those of you that are parents out there, you know what I'm talking about. When your child is just doing something, they won't listen to you and you know it's best. And how excited are you when they finally get it, right? That's what God wants from us. He's a loving father and he cares about us. So today we're going to talk about stress and how to de-stress. <laughs> de-stress through stress. And it's always going to be a storm, right? Always. Okay, you probably heard this before and you're either, you're either in the middle of a storm, right? You're coming out of a storm or you're going to go in a storm. And if you've never experienced a storm in your life, can I talk to you? Can I take you out to lunch or dinner and find out your secret? Because I don't know about you, but I find this all the time. It's, if it's not one thing, it's another, right? I mean, I love those cliches. There, there was a cliche I made up a number of years ago. It's really profound. You might write this one down. Everything is always something else. I love bearisms. You know Joe, Yogi Bear? If you come to the fork on the road, take it. Here's what I like. If people don't want to go to church, you can't stop them. Okay, I, I, I guess I'm weird. Uh, but anyhow, but sometimes there's always something that's going to happen. No matter how hard you try, you're going to go through a storm. It's just amazing, right? This past week, and I'm not trying to act like poor, poor me, but it's been a fun year for my wife and family. It, it, it really has. It's been, it's been one of those fun years. But you know what? At least that's not happening in other places of the world. And, you know, I think of other places in the world like Haiti right now. I read this morning of horrible things are going on. Can we just take a moment and pray for Haiti? So, Father, we pray for Haiti right now, the country of Haiti, and the discord in the capital, Port-au-Prince. Father, we're asking somehow, some way, with the world that's distracted with the Middle East and distracted with Gaza Strip and distracted with Ukraine, Lord, I pray that we would not forget, Lord, the Haitians that are suffering right now, that are dying, the children. We even pray for our orphanage in the mountains, God. Um, we pray that you bless Dr. Franco, God, who is the director of it. Lord, we ask you to surround him. And Lord, we're asking for ingenuity. We're asking for wisdom. And Father, we're asking that you would do a miracle in that country. And Father, that you would touch those over 20, over 30 orphans that are now hiding in the mountains. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, the moment I start feeling sorry for myself, all I have to do is take a few moments and remember others. And not that that makes it better, but it does bring perspective. And so sometimes, guys, we're all under stress. But the, probably the worst stress is basically the reason you and I experience stress is because we let stress happen. It's not what happens to you. It's what happens in you, right? We have to understand that. In fact, I have good news and I have bad news for you today. The bad news. You guys ready for bad news? Yeah. The bad news, the pressure may not change and it may get worse. Reminds of a story of a man who went to the doctor, and the doctor said to him, whew, I got some bad news. Do you want to hear the good news first or the bad news first? The guy said to myself, well, let me hear the bad news first. He said, well, sir, you only have 24 hours to live. He says, what? That's the good news? 
What's the bad news? I tried to call you yesterday. <laughs> All right. The good news is you can change your capacity. You can't change the things that happen, but you can change your capacity. For example, you have pressure. And often the greater the pressure and the lack of capacity equals stress. There's all these things coming upon you. And by the way, that's why you go to the gym. You go to the gym to stress your muscles out so they grow. So your lactic acid is screaming at you, ow, I'm hurting, right? And you work out, and the following day, you're bad. The second day after the workout's even worse, right? And uh, there was a time a while ago I started doing curls with my son, and I came, I actually preached like a, like a T-Rex one Sunday. <laughs> I could not get my arms down. And as you can tell, I'm very, very proficient in the gym. And <laughs> work hard on this dad bod. That's why I wear a jacket. Can I hear it? Oh, no. <laughs> okay. But seriously, you know, the pressure gets too much. And you know, stress is the gap between the demands, the pressure placed upon us, and the strength, capacity we have in meeting those demands. I would say, unfortunately, our society is creating more stress for a variety of reasons. I don't have the time to tell you all, but we are protecting kids too much and they're becoming stressed out over everything. We're trying to protect ourselves from stress. I like what a, a military a Marine told me. He says, you know what pain is? Pain is healing leaving your body. I'm sorry, pain is sickness leaving your body. Pain is sickness leaving your body. I, I, I'm going to embrace the pain because I'm finding the gain in it. So you can't run from problems. The more you run from problems, the more they chase you. You can change your geographical location. You can change your job. And it might distract you for a while, but your problems are still going to come back. The best way to go through hell is keep going. The best way to face obstacles is not around them, but through them. I'm telling you, don't be a wimp, man or woman. Face your fears. Face your troubles. Don't run from them, but run through them with God. I'm telling you right now, do not run from your problems. Run to God and then run through your problems. And I'm telling you today, we're going to look at how we can build ourselves, how you can get your capacity stronger. Now, in preparation for this, uh, I was looking at what the Bible would say about it. For example, we have these scriptures I am stressed, right? What do you do when you're stressed? What's the opposite? You, you ever find this, if you're stressed out, what's the opposite of being stressed, right? So I have a little secret for you, okay? If I am stressed, what's the opposite of stressed? Desserts. <laughs> Just saying, you might have to buy a new wardrobe, but desserts, okay. I can what? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Listen, everybody. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. It's not just a slogan that some, uh, some athletes put on their wear. That comes from the Bible, okay? I can do all things through Christ, not through my efforts, not through using Jesus, but through Christ simply means in his purpose and his plan. You see, we often act like, you know, Christianity is all about me having a victorious life through Jesus Christ. It's, no, it's not about getting God to agree with me. It's about me getting myself to agree with God. And it's through Christ, there's strength. So what do we do to de-stress? How do we get through it? Uh, a number of years ago, uh, Rick Warren, uh, I know he's a controversial figure for I don't know reason why, but people always complain about everybody. But he wrote a, a national bestseller, uh, Purpose Driven Life, great book. He also used to pa uh, pastor Saddleback for 40 years. Back in 2013, he had a horrific thing happen, uh, and a nightmare for any parent. His son took his own life at the age of 27. And they went to every mental health expert in the world. They went to every counseling. They went to every healing line. They did everything in their power, and yet their son took his own life. And I don't pretend to understand. I have no idea what that's like, and I pray I never know. But I know this, pain. Pain was real. And they, they took over a half a year just to deal with it. And they came back to their church, and they basically, I, I really like the anatomy of stress and what you're supposed to do. He gave six things, and I'm, I'm actually learning from him a little bit. By the way, I've learned something in life. It's much better to learn from other people when they go through difficulties and they go through it yourself. 
Unfortunately, most of the lessons I've learned in life is because I screwed up. But I'm learning now, as I get a little older, that I'd much rather learn from someone else's mistakes. That's a wise man or a wise woman. And so I don't have all the answers. You know, for example, I, again, I'm not, woe is me. Okay, please understand that. But I used to tell people all the time, oh, I'm so sorry you lost your mother. I'm praying for you. And I felt bad for them. But you don't know what it's like until you lose your mother. You don't know what it's like, what divorce is like until you go through divorce. You don't know what it's like to fail. You see, and, and so I, I, I'm a lot more humble now when, when people have issues. I, I don't think I understand what's going on to everybody. But God understands. And so we all have this stress, but I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. There's a brand of Christianity out there that tries to avoid suffering. Just claim your healing and it's yours. Sometimes we're not healed the side of heaven. I wish I could, I don't know why things happen. I don't understand why some people are healed and some people are not. I could sit there and theorize with you all day long. I don't know why some people go through difficulties and others don't. But I do know this. This is not heaven. This is not heaven. We're not in heaven yet. Okay, our job is to bring heaven down to earth. And sometimes we don't know why things happen. And sometimes it's okay to say, I don't know. I don't know. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I cannot control what happens to me. But with God's help, I can choose my response. Now, let me say something else really important here. Because there's two, is always opposites, right? Opposites, and often it's the people that are extreme that get the press. It's the people that have the extremes that get the internet sites. It's the people who have the extremes that get the clicks and have the most followers. There are people out there that says there's nothing you can do. It's all predetermined. God's going to do what he's going to do. It makes no difference. Suck it up. Be like a Christian Buddha and just try to detach yourself from this world and get rid of pain and, and do all that. And, and there's nothing you can do. And there's some truth, not in Buddha, but there's some, by the way, there is some truth in Buddhism about getting detached from things. But th what they miss is getting attached to Jesus Christ. So there are people out there that think there's, there's just get detached. There's nothing you can do. The cookie's going to crumble. It's going to crumble. Just face it. And, and, and there are times that that has to happen. Then there are other people who think they can control God. That God is like a little genie. You rub the lamp of the Bible. You claim the promises long enough, hard enough, believe it enough. And if you do, it's all going to come true. God will make your dreams come true. And all you got to do is have more faith. The problem is you don't know God's plan. So let me explain something to you. There's God's sovereign plan. No matter what you do, God's going to do what he's going to do. But then there's his permissive will. I call it a nebula. And often in that permissive will, there's an opportunity for you and I to battle to see things happen through prayer and through our actions. I don't know sometimes what's his sovereign will that I can't control and what's his permissive will. But it comes to a point in time that I'll do everything I can. My basic, my basic Wiring is, I'm going to believe God for change. I'm going to believe God for healing until he says otherwise. i much rather have a can-do with Jesus than, oh, well. Oh, well, that's just the way it is. Some things are never going to change. No, I want to fight. I'd rather go through hell in difficulties believing in God than skating through thinking there's nothing that God can do for me. I'm telling you right now, God is a God of power can't control what's happens to me, but I can control. Can you guys get a little tighter shot for folks? Thank you. I can choose my response. So there are basically six, uh, six things of anatomy of, of stress, and here the first one will be shock. We'll go through each one. Shock, it happens to you. I can't believe it. Sorrow, struggle, surrender, sanctification, and service. Uh, Rick Warren took the, the normal anatomy of stress, and he kind of turned it around, and I think he did an excellent job. And I tried to learn, and I try to learn from anyone I can that have been through some difficulties. Like this past week, for example, some people that I really respect and liked were at odds with each other, made a fool of themselves. And I'm like, God, let me learn from these guys. Let me learn, oh God, that I don't have to repeat what they're doing. Let me learn so I don't have to cause pain to other people. Let me learn, and this is what I found. The most important thing you and I can do is have humility. As recognize you're not God, you don't have all the answers. And be open-minded to what the Holy Spirit would say. So the first one would be shock. Shock, what's, all, what's that all about? Well, sometimes when you're going through a difficult time, you get a phone call. Stage four cancer has been found on your loved one. Get a, get a phone call. 
There's been a car accident and we're not quite sure your loved one's gonna make it. Or they're laying people off. You just bought a new house, you get two kids in college, you're gonna lose your job. Or maybe you get a pink slip. Or maybe you get handed divorce papers. Or maybe whatever happens, you get caught and your whole life falls apart. It's like something, like a hole been shot in you. It's like getting kicked to the stomach by a horse. And you don't even know what to do. The shock of finding out that someone that you love has died. And it just, and what you want to do, I, some people do this, I do this, I like to isolate. When I'm hurting, leave me alone. Don't talk to me. I don't want to talk to anybody. Leave me alone. I don't want anyone consoling me. Leave me alone. When I'm going through a shock moment, I'm going to get by myself. The problem with that is you get in your own thoughts. And you start isolating. And you start almost like, pardon the phrase, but you're almost going to the bathroom in the water you're drinking. Because you're sitting there in this water. And you're hurting. And you're all by yourself. And you get poisoned by your own thoughts. You're not, don't isolate. Don't isolate. The Bible talks about how important it is. Two are what? Better than one because they have a good return from their labor. If either one of them falls down, one can help the other. But pity the fool, as Mr. T used to say, but pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them up. Everyone needs somebody, right? That's why it's important to get connected to everybody. You need somebody you can call upon and say, listen, I'm going through a heck of a time here. There's a reason in warfare. There's a lot you can learn about Christianity through tactics of war. Because a lot of the same things happen. You have somebody with you in that foxhole. You're not by yourself. So they always stay in groups. They always watch each other. They don't isolate, right? So you and I need the importance of getting together with other people. When, when life falls apart, what we want to do, when life falls apart, don't run from God and people. Run to them. When life falls apart, don't run from God and people. Run to them and run to godly people. Run the people that are going to say the right thing. If you just lost your business and you're bankrupt, don't run to a friend that's bankrupt. Run to a friend that got out of bankruptcy. Run to, now, nothing wrong with your friend who got bankrupt, but don't go to the blind so you can see. Does that make sense? And we're blessed around you. There, there are literally thousands of years of experiences in this room alone that you and I can learn from. And grow from. So when life falls apart, don't run from God. Run to God instead. So we have shock, then we have sorrow. So now it starts to hurt. By the way, this is a godly emotion, sorrow. God's never shocked, but he gets sorrow. The Bible says God, God was sorry that he made man. Now, you never had a parent that felt that way, of course. But sorrow happens all the time. The Bible says in Isaiah 53, 3, this is Jesus. He is despised and he rejected a man of what? Sorrows. Jesus understands sorrow. And sorrow is an emotion. You have to bleed out your sorrow. When someone dies, and like, for example, I had to bleed out and I continue to bleed out. Every time I have a moment to bleed out, I'll bleed out. It's important to get those toxins out of your body. In ancient cultures out of the United States, they have times for mourning. I mean, they go, they go for it. They mourn, and then the time, they set a date on their calendar. After this, we're done. But for 30 days or 40 days, we're going to mourn. We don't know how to mourn in our culture. We try to medicate it away. You sometimes got to bleed out the toxins. It's godly to mourn. It's okay. God understands when you're moaning and groaning. It's okay. God's okay with that. You need to get it out of you. You need to, and, and if you suppress that feeling, if you suppress that sorrow, it will come back and it will hurt you. So there's times to mourn. So Jesus understands that. In fact, the Bible says this, hear my cry, O God, attend to my prayer. Notice it says, hear my cry. It doesn't say, hear my complaining. Let me say something very, very important. You need to get that out to God. Tell God how you feel. God, I'm ticked off. I mean, I've even told God, God, I want to punch this guy in the mouth. I've, I've said that. God, I want to, I've said a bunch of things to God about people and circumstances. I mean, I listen, everybody, I'm Italian, okay? <laughs> my grandfather was, was in the mafia and carried a gun, okay? So listen, I have that in my blood. I got to work, watch out for it. And there are times I got to tell God, God, I, wanna, I want to cement shoes in that person. I want him to Naugatuck River, Jesus. Come on. I'm going to make a phone call in a few moments, right? And I'm German, so I can make it hurt even more. 
deadly combination. But, uh, but what I've noticed is complaining is laming. Complaining is laming. It makes you weak. It makes you pitiful. It makes you a coward of a man and a coward of a woman. But what we should do is express how we feel. God, this is how I feel. I feel like trash. And by the way, it's okay to say that. It's okay to do that and say, God, I'm going through a hard time. Hear my cry, oh God. Attend to my prayer. Okay? God was fine with people complaining. No, he never was fine with people complaining. Do you realize a whole generation of people lost their promise because they complained? All you have to do is be a parent and go on a five-hour or more vacation and have people under the age of 12 in the back seat of your car. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? I went to a foreign country. I went to Indonesia, and I'm sitting there. We're driving back, and they're going, what's that? Oh, they're asking if we're there yet. I mean, it's an international complaint. You know, just get it off your chest. Don't complain. Say, God, this is how I feel. It's okay to be real. But don't accuse. It's annoying. Can I, hear, can I hear an amen on that one? For all the parents out there. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the what? That is higher than I. Lord, I want to go to a, a higher rock than, than myself. Worship reminds me how much bigger God is than whatever I'm facing. Walking around these walls, I thought by now they'd fall, right? But you have never failed me. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness, your faithfulness. There's been times I've sang that to God. I believe you're going to do it again. And I begin to, 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 to sing out to the Lord how I feel. Worship, what worship does, it takes you out of your pitiful state and gets you a helicopter view of what God is doing. I'm gonna tell you something else that's so important you need to understand is when you get in that place, worship is powerful. Use worship. That's why not, and don't say, I'm not, not gonna, this is a bunch of weird people. I'll put my hands in my pocket. They're not coming out, right? When I used to go to Presbyterian churches, I'd be like this. When I went to Samuel's God Church, I'd be like this because I want to be a little rebellious. It's not about trying to be, uh, no. What I'm saying is, God, I, I, my hands are in the air. You are greater. You are stronger. I got a sword in my hand. I got a fist in my hand. We're going to take this sucker out. Listen, everybody, it's, worship is warrior. You are worship warrior when you say, God, you are stronger. God, you are more powerful. So that's what we want to do. So what do we do? How on earth do I get to the rock higher than I? Through worship. So we have shock, we have sorrow, and then the struggle. This is where the anger comes in. I'll be honest. I much rather be angry than fearful. I much rather be angry than depressed. Because when I'm angry, I feel like I can do something. I got extra energy to do something. You know what I'm saying? I want to attack. I want to go after it. But when you're anxious, you're scared. You want to run away. When you're depressed, you want to sleep. So sometimes the anger is a false emotion that makes you feel better, but it doesn't. Bible says be angry and do not sin. Anger is, is like adrenaline to get you to move for an action, but you cannot live in adrenaline and you cannot live in anger. Be angry and do not sin. So we worship. We worship God. We go for it. How do we handle struggle? We have anger. Why was I, look what Jeremiah has to say. He's angry. Why was I born? Was it only to have trouble and sorrow to end my life in disgrace? I mean, Job even says, Cursed the man that told my parents that I, that, that I was born. So he, listen, God's okay with you. God, I feel this way. Get it out, right? Talk about it. There's sorrow. We have trouble. It's okay to have trouble. It's okay to express yourself. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Even Jesus understands what's happening with us. You see, this side of heaven, we're not going to understand everything that happens. You're not going to understand everything that happens. And you need to stop realizing, you need to start realizing that you're not God. And I'm not God. And I'm telling you right now, what's helped me out more than anything else, if I stop being the judger of everything. I call it the judge, judge you're not. Right? I it's not even a word. Don't look it up. But I'm judging everyone. 
It's not about that. This is what I've learned. And this is what I, I used to get bitter towards people in church. I got bitter towards other people and pastors and other people. This is what I learned. People will disappoint you. You'll disappoint yourself. And if you keep your eyes on church and not God, you're going to hate the church. But if you keep your eyes on Jesus and what God has done through your broken life, you'll give grace to each other and maybe we can do something together. I'm telling you right now, what's, I, I've told many people, it, it's so important to get into the word daily. I'm giving a little uh, advertisement for getting into the word. Next to knowing Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior and, and receiving his forgiveness, every day getting into his word, getting a little into his word and getting his word in me, I begin to see how God works in humanity, imperfect humanity, and it speaks to me, it strengthens me, and it gives me power to overcome. I'm telling you how important it is that every day get in to the word. So my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? You see, what's so cool about Hebrews, it talks about people that didn't receive what they did in their lifetime. There was a movie I used to watch, and you might have known it. You ever hear Back to the Future? Kind of a cool series, all right? The second movie, Biff, the protagonist of uh, Marty, he found a sports almanac for the future because they went back in time. So in the 1950s, he's got a sport, uh, sport almanac that talked about all the scores in the last next 30 years. So what did Biff do? Ah, he bet money on all the teams, and he knew who was going to win. You see, you and I have a sports, sports almanac of all history called the Bible. We know that Jesus wins. So no matter how bad it gets down here, it's only temporary. And when you know who's going to win the game, there's still frustration watching the game, but I know who's going to win. Do you follow me? So it's not like we don't know the end of the story. We don't know exactly how it's all going to pan out, but I know that Christ wins. And I know that we are fighting from victory, not for victory. God's working as you cannot see. And you see, the American gospel will say, hey, you just give it to Jesus. It's all going to be better. It may not get better. It may get worse. You may die in your disease. Can't you be more positive? Yeah, you may die in your disease. It may happen. It doesn't always go perfect. We can see in the scriptures, everybody, but we don't look. The final curtain call, the final evaluation is not the here and now, it's eternity. You and I are created for eternity, not for being temporary. Temporary, you'll be discouraged. In eternity, you'll be encouraged. How can I say that? Well, there are others who were tortured, they didn't get what they wanted. Persecuted, mistreated. The world has not worthy of them. They wandered in deserts and mountains, living in caves and holes in the ground. These were all commended for their faith, yet none of them, listen to this, not, how many of them? None of them received what had been promised in their lifetime. Since God had planned something better for us so that only together with us would they be made perfect. It could be you're a bridge to two generations from you that's gonna change the world. Are you okay with that? Are you okay to play the small part in the orchestra? I used to laugh about the person that used to play the triangle. The orchestra would be going on. This is one guy sitting like this the whole time. And all of a sudden, dee -dee 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 -dee, that's it. Maybe you're just a triangle. That's new age. Stop it. I'm going to get a letter from somebody saying that's new age. It's not about me. What does God want me to do? I want him to say, well done, good and faithful servant. And so this is what we do. Something better for us so that we might experience it. You see, when it feels like this life is falling apart, I can remember the life to come. That's escapism. No, it's reality. It's reality, everybody. This is not all there is. And I've said it before, I've repeated myself many, many times. The people that have made the biggest contribution in history are those who live for the next life. I told you how it was when I was working with someone in martial arts and they told me to break the board. It's such a good illustration, I'll use it again. And I couldn't break the board. I hurt my hand, this little five-year-old. I'm like, what on earth is going on here? He says, stop looking at the board. He says, I want you to aim for my sternum. I want you to look at my sternum and try to punch through my sermon with your, with your palm. So I, I did, first I looked at the board. I couldn't do it. I looked at the sternum. I broke it. I looked beyond the obstacle. The only way you and I can break through the obstacles of this earth, we must look to heaven. 
to who we will be to punch through the difficulties of today. We have shock, we have sorrow, we have struggle, and here's it is, surrender. Surrender is the tender of the kingdom of God. Tender is another word for money. What tender do you have? Someone asked you, right? Surrender is the tender of the kingdom of heaven. In the military, they'll break you down in boot camp. There's no hope for a soldier until they're broken. There's no hope for you and I until we're broken, until we surrender to our commander-in-chief. That's what makes a good soldier. And what makes a good believer, a man or woman, you got to surrender to God. Whatever you say, God, I will do it. Surrendering is the tender. So really, the, the success of your life is based upon you to be man enough and woman enough to surrender to God who knows a whole lot better than you. And I encourage you to surrender to the will of God. That's so you have shock, you have sorrow, you have struggling. Sometimes you get angry, but you surrender. And then this is what happens. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. And all your ways, submit to him. Submit, submit. I mean, submission to him, and he'll make your path straight. When I choose to trust God, I am on the pathway to peace. You know, there's times that, God, I don't understand what's going on, but I'm going to trust you. I'm going to trust you. This past months, I was, uh, a lot of these things I went through with my loss of my mother, and one of the ones I got a lot into was anger. I was kind of a jerk to my brothers. I, I was angry at the doctors. I was angry at everybody for good reason. They dropped my mother. She broke her hip. I wanted to sue everybody. I mean, I was like, forget about it. I was on a war path. Because I wanted to protect, and by the way, we're still going to sue. We have, because it's not right that they treat the old people that poorly. But I realized I had to give it to God. Because I was, on, because I was hurting, and that's how I dealt with my hurt. I don't want to hurt, so I'd rather be angry. You follow me? And, and so I had, and by the way, my brothers and I are doing great now. I only have two lawsuits against them, so it's fantastic. <laughs> um, but seriously, it was very, and this happens in marriages. When you have a child with special needs or something, the, the, the couple fight against each other a lot. You need, instead of fighting against each other, you need to fight together. And so this is what can happen. So I choose to trust God. I am on the pathway to peace. God, I don't understand what you did. I mean, I even went to the basement, and no one wanted to see my mother's body. I'm just telling you, and I, I found out she died. I said, I believe God can raise her from the dead. You're out of your mind. I went to the morgue, and I unzipped the bag, and I looked at her cold body, and I said, God, you're able to raise her from the dead. But, Lord, I know it's not my will. It's your will be done. I'm that insane to believe the word of God. I know God can do anything. But I had to face it. I had to see my mother's dead body to recognize she's not there. You see, I, I, why am I saying this for? Because I'm just trying to relate a little bit to you what I've been going through myself. This is not some theoretical thing I'm sharing with you. This is something I'm having to walk through. And you guys went through a lot worse stuff than I ever have. I'm not here to tell you, look at how great you are. No, but you know what? It's hard when you go through these things. When I choose to trust God, I am the, on the pathway to peace. I trust God. I don't know why he did what he did. I don't know why my mother was mistreated. I don't know why she had to die. But I know God is fair. I know God is just, and I can trust him. As Job said, though he slay me, I will trust him. I know that God is good all the time, and all the time a God is good. He cannot help be good because he is good. So I'm going to trust in his faithfulness, even when I don't understand it. I know my Redeemer lives and I will see him one day. You know how much anxiety, that just kills so much anxiety in my life. And what's helped me, I talked about anxiety in the past, what's helped me tremendously is to recognize that he is God and he can hold the world just fine. I'm not Charles Atlas. I don't need to hold the world together. I can't control my children. God is, God's their God is he's my God. I can't control what happens in the, I don't care who's in the White House. I know who's on the throne. Do I vote appropriately? Yes. Some of us are acting like it's all coming down to who's, in the, who cares about that? God is bigger than the White House. Frankly, the White House is an outhouse. <laughs> Let's be honest. Well, that preached well. <laughs> I choose to trust God. I'm on the pathway to peace. I love the serenity prayer. I know I've shared it before, but guys, you might want to pray this one. We've all heard this before. God, grant me the serenity 
Serenity to accept the things I cannot change and the courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference. That's something like something from Yoda. Oh, that's so wise. And we stop right there. But you know what the rest of the prayer says? Check this out. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can. See, not giving up. And wisdom to know the difference. More. Living what? One day at a time. What does Jesus say? One day at a time. Enjoying one moment at a time. Like right now, I'm enjoying spending time with you guys. I love you guys. So happy you're here. And I know God has good plans for you. What a privilege and an honor. I have to share the word of God with you. I'm going to enjoy it, right? Accepting hardships as a pathway to peace. Taking, as Jesus did, the sinful world as it is. This is not heaven. Not as I would have it. Trusting that you will make all things right if I surrender to your will so that I may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with you forever in the next, amen. Now that whole scripture, I could back up with scripture after scripture after scripture. This prayer, wow, pray that for a while. Is that not awesome? That's the way we should take life, everybody. So you have shock, sorrow, struggle, surrender, and in sanctification. Now what that means, it means I build myself up. I take God's truth and I build upon precept, upon precept. And that's what makes it really, really powerful, the serenity prayer. You see, the Bible says this, not only so, but we also glory in our suffering. Guys, we do it all the time. You go to school and your brain's about to blow up. You got to write papers. You got to learn things. Why? You got to stretch your brain to grow and, and, and to become smarter. The only way you get better and more physically fit is you have to break down your body till that lactic acid is screaming at you, right? That's how you grow. Without pain, there is no gain. You have to go through it. But we also glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance, right? I'm not going to stop. Perseverance, character. And character, hope. My situation isn't a jail that imprisoned me. It's a school that shapes me. The most profound lessons I ever learned in my life was in the school of pain is where I found my gain. Now, do I want to go back to that? No, I much rather learn from other people's situations. I have studied this past week how to handle conflict like you wouldn't believe for next week's sermon. And from people that I respected, how they acted like chi children. I want to learn from their pain and be wise. And finally, service. So you have shock, sorrow, struggle, surrender, sanctification. You're getting stronger. And now here is the beauty of it all. God works all things together for good for those who love God and are called according to his purposes. God does not cause all the things to happen, but he can take trash and make it a treasure. He can take your pain and make it a kingdom gain. He can take your test and make it a testimony. That's the God we serve. What the enemy meant for evil, God can turn to good. If you surrender your pain, God will make it a kingdom gain. I want you to remember that. It's so important we understand that. So, praise be to God, our Father, of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who what? Comforts us in all of our troubles. Why? Praise be to God, of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and God of all comfort who comforts us in our troubles so that we can, what? Comfort those in any trouble with the comfort ourselves received from God so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we receive from God. Listen, everybody, your pain can help somebody else. When it's not about that, there's so much richness in this room. That's why we encourage you to get involved with groups. Don't be it alone. You can use your, your difficulties. Now, when someone talks to me, they lost their parent, their mother. By the way, every, a mother's love, a father's love, it's all different. I have a new connection now with people. I do. There's a, when I meet somebody, 
and they lost a mother. I'm like, we're right there. Before, I, I, I could cry with them, and I never lost a spouse. I don't know what it's like. but Some of you have. You can comfort somebody. Some of you went through a horrible divorce. You can comfort somebody. Some of you suffered with mental illness and got through it. You can help somebody. Some of you were suicidal and you found hope. You can help somebody. See, when you take what the enemy meant for evil for good, it really thwarts the enemy. And so in this room, we have so much history and so much victory that you and I would work together. Watch what God would do. There's always purpose in my pain if I give it to God. I just want to quickly summarize the I can. I can't control what happens to me, but I can run to God and godly people. I can't control what happens to me, but I can worship. Can we say this together? I can't control what happens to me, what? I can run to God and godly people. I can't control what happens to me, but what? I can worship. I can't control what happens to me and bad things, but I can focus on eternity. I can't control bad things, but trust God. I can't control bad things that happen, but I can learn from life situations. And finally, I can use my pain to help others. Let's pray. Father, in the matchless name of Jesus Christ, there's so much experience in this room alone. There literally is a, probably a thousand years of experience in this room. Hundreds and hundreds of years. And Lord, together we're better than by ourselves. If we're connected to the head, it's just you. Lord, we are praying that we would overcome the stressors of life by remembering these principles, oh God. That we would surrender our pain to you. That we remember that the best is yet to come in Christ Jesus. We refuse to complain, but we continue to pour out our heart, pour out our pain to you, pour out our disgust and our trouble. And say like Job, though he slay me, I will trust him. So Father, I just pray in Jesus' name for healing in this place. With every eye closed and every head bowed, let me ask you a question. If you were to die today, do you absolutely positively know you'd be with Christ in heaven? The Bible says there are appoints to man and woman to die once, then comes the judgment. There's only one way we can know. It's by surrendering your life to Jesus Christ. Have you surrendered your life to Jesus Christ where he's the boss and you're not? If you haven't done that, you're not saved. You may believe in Jesus, but so what? What saves you is believing in Jesus and surrendering. Maybe you used to surrender and that's not your tender anymore. Today's surrender. Maybe you walked away, you need to get right. Maybe you've never surrendered and today's the day. Can you be a man and woman today? Can you raise your hand and let me know that so I can pray for you? Nice and high. Anyone would say, I want to give my life to Christ today for the first time? Yes, thank you. And remember, renew my commitment to Christ today. Thank you. Any more men and women that are, are, are bold enough to stand up and say, you know what? I need more of God in my life. Okay, let's pray this, let's pray this prayer in our hearts. Lord Jesus, I believe you're the Son of God. I believe you died on the cross and rose again from the dead. Today, I choose to turn away from what I know is wrong. And I choose to accept you. Jesus, you are God, and I am not. I surrender my life to you, God. I ask you to forgive me of my sins in Jesus' name. I believe you died on the cross and rose again. Because you rise, I rise. Thank you that I'm a new child in you in Jesus' name. Amen.